Let's go! Is Arch Manning the best backup quarterback in the SEC? Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to give you an honest review because I've actually not seen any of these reps. I never actually got back around to watching them. I need you guys to let me know because... You Texas fans are after me for saying that Quinn Ewers is not the best quarterback in the SEC. In fact, I didn't even have Quinn Ewers in my top three. So it's second and six. Once again, it is 50 to seven. So you do have a piece of me that thinks that Steve Sarkeesian is saying, hey, Arch, if it's close between an RPO, just hand it off all the way. We're blowing them out. But if this truly was um, an RPO read, this ball, and look, th that was my sleep alert. There's no sleeping on BHS, baby. Um, he probably should have thrown this football if it was an RPO. Get a blown block right here to the backside. There's a lot of backups in at this point in the game. So it sets up this third and medium. This ends up being a very interesting simulated pressure. So the second level pressure is coming from here and 18 is actually backing out so it is a four-man rush but it's not what you think it is he's twisting to the inside and guess what this ends up getting protected really well lots of vertical stuff happening here arch doesn't like it I love this decision to run, not only because it works, but also if you get stopped short, the clock will continue to move and you're up by a lot, right? You just want to bleed this clock as much as you possibly can. He picks up the first down. All right, so now we get to here and uh, Texas had a few big runs to get them to this point and you get a miss bobbled snap, right? Obviously, you always want to make sure you look that thing in and the snap was right on the money. It doesn't seem like he needed to jump at all for this and that's what caused the timing and the next thing here is you just want to fall on this football right you don't want to try and make something out of nothing um especially if there's a guy just right there um still you do a good job making sure you don't get into a major major disaster and, all right so we get to the second and goal and here we go get a little play action fake i would have loved to have seen if this throw right here on the end breaker would have been there you see him um look left here and then look here and you see that he thinks about ripping it and he doesn't he actually gets really lucky that he doesn't throw this because this would have been a penalty this is an illegal man downfield okay so you know, if he throws it, it's a penalty. But if he does run it, it's not a penalty. I know that's not what he's thinking here. Um, obviously, if all your receivers are to the left, rolling out to the right, especially here, is not really that great of an option. If you do roll out to the right, you better make sure you beat this contained defender. And Art shows me a lot of athleticism right here to beat him easily. Now, He's tired, it's late, you're down 50-7. to seven. But to tight rope the sideline after this is really freaking impressive from Arch Manning. So that's good stuff. I would have loved to have seen him get spicy and see if he can cut in here and make a little more out of this. But of course, you're the quarterback. You just want to get out of bounds right there. Alrighty, so we get to this third and goal. And if you love content such as this, please hit that subscribe button. It goes a long way. This is some ridiculous quarterback play obviously rpo they're thinking you're throwing the football on third and goal and this was a really good decision obviously to pull this right you're not running it in from six yards out unless you're thinking you're going for it on fourth you'll see that the offensive line here just completely whiffs and this play is just blown up up the middle okay that's a good job by the running back helping arch out picking that guy up um, but ultimately, the focus here is on Arch in the throw. You'll see that this DB has inside leverage. This is, I believe, DeAndre Moore, who is also a freshman. He runs a really good route, and they get away with the pass interference penalty. This ball location is redunculous. I mean, you'll see on the other replay. So we launched an NFL channel, Power Hour NFL. Make sure you check it out. Brock Purdy. Almost threw the game-losing Super Bowl interception. Uh, it was dropped by Kansas City Chiefs linebacker, but it should have been pass interference. Ref swallowed the whistle. 
That is P.I. You can't hold the backside of a player while yanking him. If he doesn't yank him with that back arm, I think Moore is catching this for a touchdown right there. So that should have been pass interference. All right, so we get to this fourth and goal right here. This ball was high, okay? Now, first thing is, yes, 11 was eventually open right here, okay? But judging pre-stab where the defense was, there's no way Arch could have thought that this was going to be open, okay? He makes the right decision to throw this football to Jonte Cook, all right, a top 100 um, wide receiver, and the ball was too high. But the ball placement when you throw it to the back of the end zone, it's taught to be thrown high. Not this high, but you have to top shelf this ball, right? And it's just too high and too hot. I would like to see him still bring that down. But still, I like the decision making. And you'll see right here, the pocket is really good. This ball is high though, okay? You know, if it hits both your hands, should you bring it down? That's a tough, tough, tough catch. Still like the decision, though. Just needs to be a little bit lower. All right, so we move ahead to the second and 12. And this probably should have been a pull read right here, okay? Um, it looks like Arch is reading this defender, okay? Should he have thrown this? I don't know. That, that I, I don't know how that's actually taught, but if he does actually decide to uh, keep it and throw it, he this is a huge gainer, but he does hand it off yard down. I mean, you are winning by a lot. Still, I don't know exactly who his read should have been right there. All right, so we move ahead to this third and four, and man, Arch made this look a lot easier than it actually was. Um, you know, you're rolling out to the right side, and eventually he gets his football to Jonte Cook. I can't tell you how difficult this is. First off, this is a good job by Cook finding the soft spot in the zone and making himself open, okay? Giving himself a big target. And then you'll see, once he sees himself past the sticks, look at him move towards Arch. That's good stuff. Arch throws an absolute dot. Cook makes a man miss. It's a little risky, obviously, to give ground. But if you're able to get give ground and make a, a play, go for it. Um, you know, it doesn't look like Cook is running at his absolute fastest uh, there. I don't know if he's banged up, uh, but still a really good yak play. All right, we get to the second and 15. Uh, there were some runs mixed in there. We get a little penalty action, and here we go. Um You'll see at the snap, it looks like this corner is playing press. So you like the goal ball down the sideline here, but you'll see this corner bail at the snap. Nice little play action fake, and Arch decides to take a shot. I'm okay with it, and it's just a very difficult throw versus a corner. And you'll see that eight, even though that corner was bailing, was able to get a step. Th one thing that we've seen the best quarterbacks do is put the football a little bit more at a diagonal instead of upfield uh, to get it into this, you know, DB's blind spot. But that's a little bit more difficult into the boundary. And that's just a really good play right there by 12. Yes, our ball placement could be better. It's not the worst ball placement, but sometimes, you know, those defenders, they're on scholarship as well. They, they just make a good play. So yeah, that ball placement could have been a little bit better, but that's not here nor there. We get to this third and 15, and this is very interesting. You know, we saw Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl basically win the game on just a simple pull read and them not account for the quarterback at all. That is exactly what happens here. You know, we already saw him break the contain of 11 earlier. If he pulls this, he's picking up all the yards, right? This linebacker's flat-footed. He's not catching him as he runs into this space. But this might not have been his own read at all. It might have been a handoff the entire way. But we've seen Arch display some good rushing athleticism. And 26, I mean, this was a ridiculous run to break. Not one, but two defensive tackles tackles and then almost made him miss to make it a manageable fourth 
All right, here we go. It's fourth and five. And I don't know what Texas Tech was doing. I mean, I've never understood on fourth and mediums having your corners play this far back or just really any DBs playing this far back. But Arch just takes advantage of it. They're basically giving them this cross field throw. And I think on this play right here, this really isn't on the corner. They're expecting this overhang defender to get out um, wide a little bit quicker. That's a tough ask in this situation. Um, But this still ends up being a really good throw. He is wide open. And eight does a good job not trying to cut back. Just fall forward. Get the yards that you need to get. And pick up the first down. So is Arch Manning the best backup quarterback in the SEC? Well, in this game, he was 2 of 5 for 30 yards. And now Malik Murphy is gone to Duke. So Arch Manning is a top guy as Quinn Ewers will likely play his last season and go to the NFL next year. Um, Arch showed me some some really good athleticism in this game. Now, once again, this is a tired, beaten down Texas Tech team down by 43. But you did see some good arm strength on some of these passes. You also saw some, you know, escapability as well. It was pretty good. And I didn't really have the absolute best grade on Arch Manning coming out. I didn't think he was the absolute worst either, but let me know if you think he is the best backup going in to next year. There is a guy that I think could be better served if he was thrown into the fire. I'll do a video on him coming up, so let me know what you guys think, okay? It is power, hour, SEC, boom, now floating in your face, some uh, the Quinn Ewers film study, and tonight... We're doing chicken wings. Let's go.